Welcome to the Private Practice with Soul podcast. My name is Dr. Brooklyn Storm and I help private practice owners align their business back with their soul's calling, with their big vision and with their soul's purpose. Unlike other private practice coaches, I've traveled the world in search of spiritual resources, spiritual tools, education and information so that you can have the transformation that your soul desires and needs so that you can up level your business. How much fun is this? I love it so much. Guys, if you're not already a member of the Private Practice Monthly Mentorship Group, please check out the show notes. I would love for you to be there. In the meantime, thank you so much for pushing play today. Let's begin. Good morning, everybody. How are you going? Uh, You're listening to this on Wednesday, but I'm recording it on Tuesday and um, It's about 8 o'clock a.m. here and I'm looking out my window and the sky is black. Oh my goodness. I swear daylight savings only happened a couple of weeks ago, but you'd swear we're in the middle of winter already. I can't believe it. Um, How are you? I hope that you're doing really well and um, nice and and warm if you're in Australia. (laughs) Um, Nice and cool if you're somewhere else perhaps. So welcome to another episode of Private Practice with Soul. I'm really please that you're here. I want to say thank you so much for listening to another episode. It means so much to me that you do (laughs) and thank you for sharing them and uh, yeah thank you to uh, all the new subscribers for coming along and subscribing to the show as well. Uh, I'm really pleased that you're here. So today's podcast is on the back of a post that I wrote yesterday and the reason that that post came about was because yesterday I saw six women and I had never met any of them. (laughs) Um, So they were all new and it was really, really interesting because a theme emerged. Do you know how sometimes the universe just kind of um, waves this big banner in front of you and says, you know, this is the theme today? And it was so interesting because the theme was this feeling of, you know, self-doubt, questioning, am I good enough? And it manifested for these women in all different ways. But It was really interesting because I could relate to it too because I had been going through something very similar on the weekend. Um, On the weekend, I joined this big mastermind and it was this huge investment. You know what it's like when you invest in something? It's a bit scary, isn't it? Because you don't know (laughs) if it's going to work for you. You don't know uh, uh, what the return is going to be. It feels a bit risky, but at the same time, you put your business head on and you know that if you want to accelerate your results, you need to do something like that. So you just got to bite the bullet, right? You've got to be a businesswoman. <laughs> so uh, I stepped into the businesswoman role, yes, and uh, invested in this mastermind. And, you know, it was the usual stuff about here's the portal and you can go in here and access all the trainings. That was all good. Um, and then it was like, oh, and you can come into our Facebook group. And so I went into the Facebook group and um, I don't want this to sound wrong or anything like that please don't take this the wrong way I'm just being totally transparent and unfiltered but I kind of thought I was pretty much at the top of my game (laughs) all right I know how that sounds don't take it the wrong way but I, I was feeling confident let's say I was feeling confident. I felt like, you know, I contribute a lot. I felt like, you know, I've got this good knowledge. I felt like I'm already giving a lot of value in everything that I do. So I kind of felt like I was ticking all of the boxes, right? You know how sometimes you just get to that place where you're like just on top of things, you're not reacting to things anymore. So that's where I was. And, um, yeah, when I joined this (laughs) mastermind, I knew that it was going to be, um, you know, well, I hope that it was going to be teaching me new stuff, of course, because what's important to me about investing in myself is I know my coaching clients and my supervision clients um, also get the benefit of that because I teach them everything I'm learning about. Um, But and I, I know that they make you better. Like when you invest in courses and stuff like that, it makes you better and everybody benefits. It's bigger than just you, right? Um, anyway, so I go into the, I check the portal out. That's all good. And then it says, oh yeah, go here and join the Facebook group. And I thought, oh gosh, another group, like I'm all grouped out. You know, the feeling like sometimes I, 
every now and again, I do a cull on my Facebook groups and I think, oh, if I haven't been in there for six months, I'm just going to leave the group nicely, you know, with gratitude and everything, but I'm just going to leave that group. Um, and I figure I can always come back to it if I need to. So every every so often I do this cull of my Facebook groups. When I do that, it feels really good because I get my list down from, I how does it even get up to 50, you know? I don't even know how I ended up in half of these groups, but honestly, anyway, so... I was thinking, oh gosh, not another group, you know, but I wanted to click in and just see what it was all about. And holy moly, when I clicked into that group, I suddenly felt like not the smartest person in the room anymore. Um, And don't take that the wrong way either. As I said, I'm just sharing with you how I felt like I went from having like 10 out of 10 confidence to like two out of 10 confidence. I was like, OMG, what's going on? I was just in this whole other level of women in business. And uh, it really, it really sort of took me aback. And I thought, oh no, what am I doing? And I felt my face go red. And I thought, oh my gosh, you know, they're going to find out that I'm not as smart as them. They're going to find out that I'm not as good as them. They're going to find out like just this whole, they're going to find out, which obviously that's imposter syndrome, isn't it? Um, None of us is immune to imposter syndrome, which is the whole point of this podcast, by the way. Um, and so, yeah, I was having a little bit of a uh, private freak out in my home study, <laughs> in my home office, just looking at all of the posts that these other uh, women in business had been posting. And they were doing things like, um, for me, it was quite intimidating, but they were like, oh, you know, um, I used this strategy and it was amazing. And I just had my first launch ever and it was $500,000. And I was just sitting there going, What? <laughs> And then somebody else was saying something similar, you know, she just had her first launch and she made, you know, 475000 I was like, what? Not that it's all about money, but I'm just giving you some examples of the first things that popped up in my feed. And I was thinking, I don't belong here. Like... <laughs> Um, I thought, number one, I'm not good enough. Number two, I'm never going to do that in a launch. Number three, they're going to find out that I don't belong here. (laughs) And then, you know, what happened after that was it must have stayed with me on the weekend. And um, it was so interesting. I'll tell you what happened. So that night, so it was Saturday, okay, and then Saturday night I went to bed and I had this nightmare, (laughs) and um, I'm only just recalling it now as I'm sharing this with you actually, but I had this really bad nightmare, and um, it was like I was camping and there were these log cabins, and it was myself and two other families, and there were probably about five or six people in the other families, you know, there were the two parents and there were the, the kids and we're all about the same age, and we're out in the woods which there aren't even any woods near me, so I don't even know how this happened. But anyway, they're out in the woods and um, it was getting quite cold and everybody was really excited to go out and see if the lake had frozen over or if the lake had any ice in it. And so um, I heard all the parents telling their children, you know, make sure you put on your jacket, um, rug up, put your hat on, put your scarf on, make sure you've got your shoes on. Um, Do you know what I mean? Like just getting them ready. But nobody told me to go and do any of that sort of stuff. So I was just kind of standing there because I didn't belong to either family. Right. You can see (laughs) Freud would have a field day, right? I didn't belong to any family. And I was just kind of standing there thinking, "Mm, what do I do? And then I could feel the other children from the other families pushing past me because I was in the corridor and the front door was in front of me. So they were pushing past me to get out through the front door. And so I just went out there in my pajamas with bare feet and was you know, looking at the ice and um, they were all poking the ice with sticks and having this great old time. And then one of the parents said to me, oh, you shouldn't be out here without shoes on and come on, you need to go and put on a coat and put on some warm clothes and what were you thinking sort of thing and took me back inside and then I woke up. So I guess my, inter- and I'd be interested to know what you think, but my interpretation of this is um, I was feeling out of my depth. <laughs> I was feeling frozen out, even though I wasn't, but this is, I guess, how it's come up in my mind. I was feeling frozen out. I was feeling um, like a bit cold, like I didn't belong, obviously, because no one was talking to me. I was a new person in the group. No one was talking to me. No one said, hi, Brooklyn, welcome to the group or anything like that. Um 
so I was filling on the outside and then um, I guess the other part of the dream was I allowed myself to just sort of be left behind while everybody rushed ahead of me and they all knew what they were doing. I didn't know what I was doing. They did. They had the confidence. They went out there and they did it and they poked the ice with the stick. I just went out there with no equipment, (laughs) with no coat, with no stick, with no shoes, nothing. I just went out there almost naked, so to speak. Um, But then when somebody came and said, no, 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 this isn't how you do it. Like there's another way you need to go and get these resources about you. I think what this is saying to me is, yeah, I was feeling out of my depth, but it's going to be all right. These people are ahead of me, but they're going to teach me um, about what I need to do. Do you think that's a fair interpretation of that dream? So anyway, um, from there, from that dream, um, I guess I sort of realized, okay, well, this is the start of something new. (laughs) I'm not the smart one anymore. Um, I'm now at the bottom of the list, um, but I'm going to work my way up to the top. And then I got so excited because just the idea that there was so much more for me to learn about business was riveting. And so I've jumped into the portal and it's frustrating because, um, well, with my class, with the private practice with soul class, I drip feed the content every month to the students in there, the women in private practice in there. So it's like the ninth of every month, a new module unlocks for them. And the reason that I do that is because I don't want them to feel overwhelmed. I want them to finish what they're working on because that then forms the foundation for the next month's work. If I just gave them access to everything, they would just end pen pick pen pick um the bits that they think that they want and need but it wouldn't work out because they wouldn't have put those foundations in place so make sense and i want them to have everything working out and i want them to be super successful and that's why um I mean, nobody said it's frustrating, but I imagine it probably is if they're like me because I just want to have access to everything straight away. But there's method behind behind it. Um, and the, the intention is I want them to be successful. Okay. So in this portal that I'm in, um, yeah, they do the same thing. It's only you can only access one thing a month. But um, I've jumped in there. They had some free resources, which I also give my ladies as well. And those free resources were super helpful. Um, and yeah, and I taught myself click funnels. Like who'd have thought like, Does anybody use ClickFunnels for their private practice? Probably not. Um, In fact, I'm the only woman, I know this much, I'm the only woman in this mastermind um, that has anything to do with health and wellness. Um, And so what I'm doing is I'm taking the content that I'm learning from the mastermind and I'm applying it to private practice. And then when I get my head around it, and you know me, I want to test things before I share them with my um, women. So I'm just going to test it, see how it goes. And if it works out and I, you know, create a super magic formula, um, then I will absolutely share it with them because it's going to be a game changer. Don't you love it when you can apply stuff from other industries to our industry and it actually works? It's so cool. Anyway, so there's all of that and I've changed a whole lot of stuff already. Like I've already had big shifts in my business and it's only been, you know, three days or something. But here's the thing that I want to share. Um, It doesn't matter. I don't think it doesn't matter where you are in your private practice or where you are in your business. No one's immune to this imposter syndrome. We all feel it from time to time. And the other thing that I want to um, share is it doesn't matter what qualifications you have. Um, what matters is that, you know, you love what you're doing and you serve from, from your heart. I think if you start looking at what other people are doing and you start comparing yourself, you set yourself up for a really difficult time because I believe that nobody's actually like you. And as I said before, you know, there could be a hundred of us that have all been trained in, say, person-centered therapy or CBT or acceptance and commitment therapy or something like that. But you know what? We would all deliver it differently. 
And the reason for that is because of our uniqueness. It's what, you know, it's the way we smile, it's the way we laugh, it's the way we connect with the people that we're working with. It's whether we're coming at it from a very clinical, medical, pathologizing approach or if we're coming um, from a space of building that relationship, of nurturing, of loving our clients, of, um, you know, really connecting with them in in a much more deeper level. So... Because that's how I see private practice and that's how I see our roles in private practice as being same, same, but different. It's that same Bali in Thailand. <laughs> same, same, but different. Um, I, I think don't get caught up on um, what your qualifications are. The other thing apart from qualifications that people get caught up on is I can't charge the fees I want because I'm in a low socioeconomic area. Let me tell you, I'm in one of the worst socioeconomic areas in the whole of, you know, Victoria. Um, I'm in a suburb. Look, we're rebranding at the moment. We're calling it um, Western Port, (laughs) which sounds really lovely, doesn't it? But it's actually Hastings. And Hastings, um, you know, like there's housing commission homes next to me, (laughs) Um, And it's generally a little fishing town on the coast um, out of Melbourne, about an hour and a bit out of Melbourne. And um, yeah, it's really low socioeconomic. You know, it's really high unemployment here. So many people on benefits from from the government here because they can't get work. Education um, is really low here. Stuff like that. There's hardly any jobs here. It's a, um, the main industry here is farming. Um, and most of those farms are family farms. Um, and apart from that, we've just got a little street and there's maybe, I don't know, maybe a hundred shops here in Hastings. Um, so there's not, not much going on here, but I've managed to still be here and create, you know, a six figure practice, (laughs) um, a high six figure practice. Um, so don't think that because you're based in a low socioeconomic area, that that means you can't achieve the dream or the goals that you set for yourself. Um, and honestly, while we all want to be loving and, and kind and beautiful and share our light and things like that, you, you're running a business. So you also do need to have financial goals in place because if you're not turning over um, enough money to pay yourself and pay your superannuation and pay your tax and pay your rent, all those sorts of things, you're not going to have a business. So um, it is a spiritual thing to be looking after your money because it unlocks more opportunities for your clients. Kind of like I wouldn't be in this mastermind if I hadn't um, been tracking my income and my turnover there's no way I could have afforded this Um, but it's a reinvestment back into my business that's going to result in bigger shifts and changes for my clients which helps me achieve my impact goals right it's a whole other podcast on key performance indicators don't worry we'll do that another time it's a bit dry isn't it but the thing is that um, all of us Um, at all different points of our journey wonder if we're good enough and the difference between um, us is some of us are really good at handling that and others of us aren't and so if you get stuck on that I'm speaking to you now and I want you to remember that the only person who's going to judge you or whose judgment matters is your own the only person whose judgment matters is your own, okay? So if you feel good, if you feel comfortable, if you feel like you're serving, if you feel like you're doing that in a way that meets all your requirements, what are you worried about? Stop listening to everybody else. They're they're all going to have their own opinion and they're entitled to that, just like you're entitled to have yours. But you get to choose what you're going to take on board and what you're not, okay? So I believe that the answers for your practice, for your business, for your life, for for everything come from within and that they're accessible to you um, through all sorts of different ways, whether or not you want to settle your breath and become quiet and just tune in and see what guidance comes through. Maybe you want to meditate and allow yourself to see what guidance comes through. Maybe you receive guidance when you're out on a walk and you're just clearing your mind and you're moving your body. That's okay. But 
um, give yourself that space. It's safe for you to tune in and see what your heart says about this situation. And I bet if you took a moment to tune in and listen to your higher guidance or listen to what your heart was going to say, when you ask, am I good enough? I bet your heart says you're more than good enough. Okay. And that's probably going to be the most powerful thing that you can experience because it's not me telling you that you're good enough. It's not anybody else telling you that you're good enough. It's coming from within, which means you're going to engage with that and it can become a new belief for you. And from that space, then you can create all these other beautiful, extraordinary, wonderful experiences for yourself and for your clients. Okay. So what are you going to do next time you're in one of those Facebook groups and somebody says, well, you don't have a PhD, therefore you shouldn't be in private practice. Or somebody says, well, you're not a psychologist, therefore you shouldn't be in private practice. Or somebody says, well, you're not good enough because you X, Y, Z. What are you going to do now, right? How are you going to deal with this now? You know, because I just told you, you're going to go inside. (laughs) Okay. And remember that when other people are having a go or when other people are being critical and things like that, um, although it hurts us because, you know, we're women, we're emotional beings and all of that sort of stuff. And this is important work to us. And um, it shows that you care when you get upset. But just also remember what we speak about um, on this show about, the masculine and the feminine energy and the shadow masculine and the shadow feminine. I would, you know, put myself out here and just say, if people are openly criticizing and making comments and judgments that just aren't nice and that they're just a little bit negative and, you know, I would imagine that those people, whether they're men or women, are um, coming from an energy of that shadow feminine right or that shadow masculine where they're um, feeling judgmental they're feeling um, not good enough for themselves um, that something you've done or said or someone around you has done or said something that's triggered an existing pain point for that person and they're just dealing with it by you know having a case of verbal diarrhea in a Facebook group you don't need to buy into it I think look at that person through eyes of love and compassion and just think wow this person must be in a really bad space to feel like it's okay to say this sort of stuff in in a public forum you know, and you have empathy for that person, you have compassion for that person, because it's not something you might do, and certainly not something I would ever do. But imagine what it must take for a person to get to that place where they think it's okay to to have a go, right? They're obviously not in, in a great place. There's something else going on there, and it's got nothing to do with you. You've just triggered, as I said, you've just triggered some kind of pain point within them, Okay, it's never about you. Um, So just remember that as well. So no action steps from today's podcast. I know that's a change, isn't it? (laughs) But I guess, I guess, I guess if you wanted to, the action step could be save this episode because maybe one day you're going to need it. In fact, I know one day you're going to need it. Um, And just remember, make a note to yourself somewhere special in your diary, in your journal about any key takeaways from this podcast episode so that if anything does happen and you feel upset by somebody else's comments, you can can, um, you know, look at your notes and have a quick reflect and think, oh, okay, this isn't about me. I just need to take a step back. Um, and, you know, look at that person through eyes of love and eyes of compassion. Okay. As I said, it's never about you. All right, my lovelies. I hope that you have a really, really, really beautiful day. Before I go, I just want to say if you're having uh, trouble or if you want my help finding, acquiring and retaining clients for your private practice, check out the show notes because I've put a link in there. Um, Happy to help you. Um, You can find out more about it. um, Yeah, just by clicking that link. Have a gorgeous day and I will talk to you soon. Thank you so much for listening. You're the best. Bye.